So let's discuss yet one more technique of risk analysis. What we do in this technique is we adjust the risk in the discount rate. You know, a very simple rationale that we are providing over here that if you are taking more risk, then you will demand higher return. You know, this is the simple logic of this particular technique. Think in this way. Let us say you have rupees 1 lakh to invest. Okay, you have 1 lakh to invest. And you are planning to put this money, let us say, in a fixed deposit. If you put money in this fixed deposit, the bank is suggesting that you will get 6% interest. Fine. Okay. Another option that I have is that this one lakh I can invest in the stock market. Let us say I'm investing in shares. Now just give me a simple answer. If you are putting money in a fixed deposit, you will get 6% return. If you are planning to put your money in stock market, how much return will you expect? Will you demand a return of 6%? less than 6% or more than 6%? Tell me, what comes to your mind? If you are putting your money in the stock market, will you expect 6%, less than 6 or more than 6? I hope you are a rational person. And if you are a rational person, you will demand more than 6%. Can you answer me? Why are you demanding more than 6%? Tell me, why are you demanding more than 6%? Any reason? Any reason? The reason is that when I put money in fixed deposit, right? When I put my money in risk deposit, there is no risk. When I put 1 lakh in State Bank of India, I don't perceive any risk. And that is the reason I'm expecting a lower return. See, when there is no risk, you will not mind getting less return. But the moment you are putting money in stock market, you are perceiving higher risk. Higher risk means you will demand higher return. This extra return that you are demanding, let's say for example, I am putting my money in stock market and I am demanding 10% return. Let's say I am demanding 10% return over here. This extra 4% that you are demanding, extra 4%, how did I get extra 4%? Without any risk, it is 6%. And with risk, it is 10%. So 10 minus 6, I am demanding extra 4%. This extra 4% that I am demanding, it is popularly known as risk premium. This is what we are going to do in the risk adjusted discount rate technique. In the risk adjusted discount rate technique, we will try to figure out that when we are doing a project, are we taking more risk? Are we taking less risk? And on the basis of that, we will decide what should be our risk premium. Should I charge higher risk premium? Should I charge medium risk premium? Should I charge lower risk premium? And this risk premium, I will add to the risk-free rate of return. A project that will have higher risk will have higher risk premium, and thereby it will have a higher discount rate. A project that has lower risk will have lower risk premium, and hence it will have a lower discount rate. Once the discount rate has been adjusted, then it is a regular calculation of NP. Just as we were doing NPV analysis till now, in the same way, I will carry out my analysis. So that is what I will be doing in this particular technique. So in this technique, what I will do is, as I said, I will work out a risk adjusted discount rate. I will work out a risk adjusted discount rate. How will I get the risk adjusted discount rate? I will take risk free rate and add to that risk premium. Okay, I'll add to that risk premium. Let's take an example. 
let us say i am analyzing two project project a and project b okay risk free rate let us say is six percent over here in project a i am perceiving in project a i am perceiving higher risk so i am considering a higher risk premium let us say nine percent so i get 15 percent in project b i am perceiving lower risk so i consider risk premium to be five percent so i get 11 percent so whatever are the cash flows of a i will discount at 15 percent whatever are the cash flows of b i will discount at 11 percent and work out the NPV. but see the final decision criteria remains the same i will accept that particular project where the npv is the highest so the project which will have a higher npv that project will be accepted doesn't matter it's quite possible that i discount at 15 percent and still the npv turns out to be positive fine it means the risk is worth taking even if i'm taking a higher risk i'm still getting a higher npv then I will go ahead with that particular project. So wherever the NPV is higher, I will select that particular project. Let's consider our write-up on the risk adjusted discount rate. As I said, that we will demand higher return if there is a higher risk. So you can see the risk adjusted discount rate is based on the concept that investors demand higher return from risky project it's very natural if i'm taking higher risk i will definitely demand a higher return right so they are saying that the required rate of return on any investment should include compensation for delaying the consumption plus compensation for inflation equal to the risk-free rate of return plus compensation for any kind of risk taken okay and that is what they are saying uh, i'll move into the next para a risk adjusted discount rate is a sum of risk free rate and the risk premium here is the formula we discussed that earlier also then they have explained us that what do we mean by a risk free rate and what do we mean by the risk premium risk free rate of course is the return that you will get without taking any risk at all a government security is normally considered to be the risk free security right a very risk free security risk premium is the extra return that we are demanding on account of the risk that we are undertaking what are the advantages of this particular technique okay it is easy to understand it's also very easy to explain right i explained it and there was hardly anything that i had to really do and it incorporates the risk premium and the discounting factor so i am finally able to work out that if this project is having a higher risk then how much return should i demand from that particular project what is the limitation limitation of course is the risk premium how will i decide the risk premium right here we were saying that my risk premium will be nine percent my risk premium will be five percent from where did you get these figures how shall we determine these figures right so that is the issue that we are going to face over here similarly though the npv is calculated it is not possible to calculate the standard deviation of a given project standard deviation that is going to be our next discussion standard deviation is basically quantifying the risk quantifying the risk till now we were we are saying higher risk lower risk medium risk i am asking you question how much is the risk is the risk 10 percent is the risk 12 percent so that is quantifying the risk and quantification of risk will happen by the standard deviation that is a concept that we still have to discuss.